For this lesson, we're going to focus on what a constraint is and how we can use two physics objects, specifically basic entities, to tie them together and maybe change some of the properties so they behave differently from, say, a, a gimbal itself and also being able to go down a line. So think of if you hung up a piece of clothing and you had a clothesline and you just zipped it straight down or zip line itself. This is how you would do it in a physics sense. So we're going to go ahead and go to Entity, and we're going to drop right down into Physics, and we're going to grab a basic entity. And I'm going to keep it as a sphere. We're going to raise it up just a little bit. I'm going to go to Tools, Level Editor, Level Settings. Let's go ahead and dock that over here on the right side. And we're going to activate the total illumination. And this will give us the nice little global illumination so we can see the whole thing. Let's go back to properties and we're going to leave this as is. We're going to grab a, another basic entity and add it into the scene. And I'm going to hold down control and shift and snap it into place. Let's move it a little bit lower. And we'll go ahead and change this to a pyramid because it's going to be easier to see what we're doing. So with both of these into place, I want to actually add some mass to this. So we'll make this uh, 100 kilograms. And if I were to jump into the scene right now and shoot, I would see that it drops immediately, as would be expected. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into physics again. We're going to grab a constraint. And this time, we're going to snap this into place and move it up. So with this here, I want to come down and I can see that it's constrained fully. And this means that it will have a full spherical rotation. And if we go into the default settings, let's go ahead and jump in. And if I shoot the pyramid this time, you'll see that it actually moves. It's almost like a bell that you would see. So in that theory, you could have a bell in your game and you'd have a surface type of metal and you would be able to see the bell sway after you shot it. So we'll go ahead and escape out of that. And let's look at a couple things here. We have the damping itself, so if we increase this to something really high, this should make the swaying less apparent. So if I shoot it now, it's very, very slow, and it won't go out as much. But this is even more apparent if we switch this to a constraint to line. So I'm going to go ahead and make this zero again. And what this is going to do is it's going to look down the x-axis, so that means it's going to fly down this axis when I shoot it. And you'll see what I mean being a zip line because it's just going to move in that axis. So I'm going to hop in. If I shoot it this time, you can see that it moves all the way down there. It's got rotation and whatnot. So let me go right down here to the constraint itself. Go ahead and press F and freeze this. I'm going to hold the space bar down and I'm going to click the constraint. And now what I want to do is I want to add damping. So I'm going to add damping of about 100 to this, and we'll shoot it this time and see if there's any change. So you'll see now it takes a lot more to make it move because the physics damping has come into play. So another thing that I want to point out is if we change the snapping here, let's make it to 0.25. And I'm going to lower this down just a little bit. And what we want to do is we want to grab this constraint as it is, and let's change the radius to something like 0.5. So now we're just barely within this volume itself. So if I hop in and I press and shoot this, it doesn't actually capture it. So if I move this up just a little bit, we're not even connecting it anymore. And we were to hop in and shoot it, we would notice that it actually registers and it's still moving down that line. So likewise, we can come right back in here and disable it, and we'll get the bell animation or the bell constraint like we had before. So this right here has been a basic overview on the constraint system as it is. In most cases, you would simply use this to constrain two objects together, or maybe you can constrain multiple objects and have things hang and dangle. You're, it's up to your imagination, really. So you can expand upon this and use this in your levels and maybe make things a little bit more interactive for your player to engage with.